Um, yeah, I can use my name. I just put John. Do you want me to just? Oh no, it? no. I mean, like, could you make it as uh, short as possible, just like a space, so nothing shows up? I want to see if it'll get rid of the. Uh... Oh, sure. Oh, now I switched to my my full name. Oh. Good. Probably... Um. So I just do that. I wonder there, if I spelled I... that right. Did I spell your name right on the video on the YouTube video? Oh, I've I'm not looking at the YouTube. I will check. Video. Yeah. Yes, I did. I got it right. Okay, good. Oh, yeah, that works. Right. That works really well. The, the capital oh, I. Because yeah, because I zoomed in, it, it's really big. So smaller is oh, better. Oh, cool. Um, it's really big. All right, sounds good. We got people in the audience. Everything is good. So, Jonathan, thanks again for coming on for the second time. Appreciate you taking the time yeah, to have a conversation. Thanks, Tom. Uh, yeah. You said you wanted you had other stuff to talk about or something. Yeah, yeah, I've got a few things. I actually was kind of uh, disappointed. I was, uh, I had this like big plan to uh, make this dramatic presentation of the atheist nightmare. I was going to go like, you know, behold the atheist nightmare, but we just uh, ran out of bananas this morning. So <laughs> I, don't <know. laughs> I don't know if you're... Uh, yeah, yeah, come for jokes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, I just, you kind of left me a bit... Um, perplexed when uh, we were t when we were talking about kind of more um, of the um, cosmological argument and talking about um, Aquinas and divine simplicity particularly um, and so I kind of did a little bit more research and I kind of came to uh, to an answer it's a lot more complex than I uh, than I first imagined those kind of through the help of my friend uh, Celia Hatherley, who's a uh, Avicenna scholar, but I, I thought I I also kind of wanted to present you know a, more of a nominalistic uh, argument, which uh, I came from this priest that I know, uh, Father Cleveley, who actually is a convert from atheism, and I thought that might actually appeal a little bit more to your to your crowd, you know, because it's uh, you know he starts off with uh, this. Um, well, what do you mean by axiom. nominalistic? Okay. Nominalistic. Nominalistic. Okay, so the difference between uh, essentialism and nominalism is basically that uh, categories uh, just have like names, and so that's kind of like, you know the modern view since like you know basically the 1500s. You know that uh, that all categories you know are just things that we actually apply names to it to rather than things that uh, actually exist. So essential realism believes that there is actually such a thing as the essence of humanity. And so and so it, that's why kind of a lot of the classical arguments can kind of seem a little bit obscure in, uh, in modern arguments because there's been this like ongoing assumption that categories are just names that's existed for, you know, like 500 years, sometimes even before. Like um, Peter Abelard was a nominalist in the late 11th early 12th century so yeah so nominalism has been around for a long time well just to clarify like most people aren't nominalists like some things that we refer to do exist like the sun the sun exists it's a real thing sure yeah but like the um but the sun yeah but the the sun also the essential realism would assert that the sun you know participates in the essence of you know starness and that that's a real thing Right. So, so, so just to clarify, yeah. like uh, normally people don't say all things are just categories humans made up and all things right. are uh, real meaningful words that refer to reality, <clears throat> but there's a combination of the two. So the same would apply to my position. I don't think all words are just made up concepts. Just some of them are. So wouldn't be a good oh, okay. position there. Yeah. But I guess, I guess like the, um, the difference is that it's, you know, that, the name itself like the the category you know for instance actually has like an existence you know like uh like plato's like world of the forms or like that was kind of converted into uh <clears throat> oh it says my video is going live at 1 30. oops so <laughs> I, I, I misscheduled it oh well whatever they can just watch it on youtube um uh yeah but uh so yeah the um and that was converted into Christianity is sort of like, you know, the essence is existing in the, in the mind of God, you know, and so they have real existence, even though they don't exist uh, in our world. 
So that's kind of, uh, and you know, that was held by a lot of thinkers up until, you know, kind of the, uh, you know, science. the modern, yeah, science and stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Oh, All sorry. right. So what, what was sorry. the argument you wanted to talk about? So the argument basically from nominalism kind of comes from uh, Wittgenstein. And at the end, I, I, I just was recently reading through the Tractatus again. And you might, I, are you familiar with, you're probably familiar with Tractatus. Yeah, Tractatus, Logical, yeah. Philosophical, yeah. something like that. Logic, yeah, yeah. Those. So at the end, kind of, Wittgenstein has this kind of enigmatic, enigmatic statement that says that the mystery of things is not how the world, the, the mystery in the world is not how it is, but that it is. And so Father Philip kind of goes into this, into this really sort of uh, interesting sort of dialectic about, about the world being like that it is uh, into the, into the being of the world. So, you know, you can say that um, you can, that things actually have uh, existence outside of, you know, our, our thoughts. And there's something, there, there is something kind of, you know, mysterious to that, even though it's something that we all take for granted, you know, I can have, you know, a friend who I, you know, really, who I really love, and I can think of him all the time, but those things, but those thoughts can never actually produce his actual existence. His actual existence is something that exists beyond my capacity of thought. You know, the, the fact that how he exists enables me to think about him, um, but extramentally for him to exist, there has to be something for him, there has to be some principle for his existence. He has to there's there he has a sheer existence and um and we and so we can explain you know how he exists but but that he exists is uh is kind of an entity unto until itself it's not something that we can explain and that's something we can apply to you know the whole world you know we can have all these elaborate arguments uh arguments and explanations about you know how the world is but that it is 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 a completely different matter it's it is uh mysterious as uh as wittgenstein sort of you know asserts and uh russell kind of you know conceded that point as well he said yes the existence of the world indeed is a mystery but we just have to accept it as a brute fact and that's you know one that's one out in a way but there's but the fact that the world exists doesn't explain itself it, it, it causes us to you know ponder why is the world just like you know why do i exist you know th those are questions that science itself can't that can't, can't answer you know science itself i, I am lost takes I am not, i'm not following the oh, structure okay. of the argument so the reality has to exist. There can't be a philosophical nothing. Sure. And there's always yeah. going to be a mystery to why it exists. You just, you can fill that mystery with it's a necessity in its nature, either from a God or from naturalistic pantheism or whatever. Or you could say it's a brute uh, contingency, either from a God or from naturalistic pantheism or whatever. But that's, uh, I don't see how this in any way relates to the discussion in some ways. Just I'm not following the structure yeah of the sure i mean it's a it's a long it's a long-winded argument basically to say in a very crude syllogistic fashion that <clears throat> that being exists uh and god is being therefore god exists uh well that seems to beg the question like yes mm. stuff exists and if you label yeah. that stuff with god then okay that's fine but the question is, is is that fundamental nature of reality a conscious mind or is it a non-conscious thing those are the that's what we want to know so just calling well, yeah. reality itself uh labeling reality god doesn't really get us anywhere yeah i mean it gets us it gets us you know some places like you know father Philip, he is still anomalous so he wouldn't actually say through reason that it gets us you know much further than that than this like you know wonder uh, that you know that the that the world actually does in fact exist. Well, I mean, I don't think but, that um, argument gets us literally anywhere because all it's stating mm -hmm. is reality exists, and and then you just label reality with God, the label God, which means nothing other than reality. So reality exists is essentially the argument. Like, yes, I agree, reality exists totally. <laughs> well, then we agree, <laughs> you know. But uh, yeah, but that's 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 basically 
Aquinas's understanding of God is that God is being. Now that doesn't. Now there's a there's a distinction between well the problem being the, and myself. Well, the problem yeah. with Aquinas's view is that he has lots of entailments into what being is. It has lots of other properties right. in it, and then that's the part that's sure. up for debate. So just just saying that reality exists and reality is being like being just equals reality. That's just a tautology. It doesn't mean anything. You're just still saying reality exists. The problem is, is right. that when Aquinas asserts all of these other things that are in the being that there's no evidence for, that's the problem. Right. So yeah, if, like for instance, you know, like uh, one, like oneness. Like, would you say, would you say that somehow all of uh, reality is somehow, you know, one thing? Could you, would you, would you agree with that? Uh, like for instance, in a way, like I can say that um, that everything in the world or in the cosmos has being so i could i could say that there is some fundamental field of energy that makes up literally everything and then we're just different kinds of knots in the energy field and so it's all just one big string so we are all technically the same thing uh that is a possibility or we could be discrete things and we just label the all of the set of discrete things uh as reality and that's all one set which is an abstract set so either one of those is possible okay but what about the things you know that are privations of energy like if you t- grant that there's like you know like a mile of like empty space you know even though still energy it's like oh still energy yep. like space is energy yep still a field so all of the different fields are all different versions of energy okay but conceptually couldn't you have something that where there is where there is nothing like a true sort of like you know yep. vacuum of existence okay so, so so both of the hypotheses are one is that everything including space and time is all of the essence of energy so it's all oneness or it's uh discrete things like there's a particle over there and a particle over there and there's literally nothing uh existing between them or something and they're completely discrete universes unto themselves or whatever and that's also possible so either one of those is possible Hmm. I, I don't quite understand. Can you like maybe elaborate on that a little bit more? Uh, so, so a reality, which is nothing but oneness, it's all one thing. Mm-hmm. That's a possibility. So it's just energy everywhere and everything is nothing but oh. energy. And another okay. possibility is that there's energy and then there's some other thing that's in a completely discrete uh, state that isn't connected to energy. And it also exists and it's a separate thing. And there might be no kind of thing in between them, like an, a nothingness, uh, empty space kind of an idea. And those that's also possible. So both, both kinds of universes, one where it's just all oneness and one essence that is everything. And another that is there's discrete things that are completely separate. Both of those are possible. And there's, doesn't okay. really make a difference. Which one but like, if you take, but you take all of those possibilities, you know, don't, doesn't like any possibility need something actual in order for those possibilities to actually become actualized. I don't know what that means. Like, uh, like, there, there aren't, instance, reality isn't yeah. a possibility that became actualized it is an actualization it is it is actualized inherently so and whichever sure. one is reality is the one that was has always been actualized it's not like they they changed or they were both ideas and then became actualized that's not how it works sure but i mean but there is i mean but there is potentiality in in every in every possible universe like it can be it can be something other than than it is you know that it can change it's changeable uh it's irrelevant the fact that we can imagine something being different is irrelevant to whether or not it is actually different or could have actually been different so our ability to imagine something being different does not actually mean it could be different i can imagine but, god differently oh, sure, but doesn't sure. mean that god is necessarily could be different well yeah but that's yeah but that's kind of taking uh taking a different definition of of god essentially well no no so it doesn't matter what definition of god you use here that's irrelevant to the argument the thing is is Mm. that you imagine god can cannot be changed i imagine god can be changed one of us is right one of us is wrong uh reality determines which of those is right and which of those wrong not your definition your definition is irrelevant uh so the, the problem here is that when we want to know which is the case or if it's the case that the universe can or cannot be changed the determining factor is reality not your definition so the fact that you can imagine the universe being different doesn't matter at all because maybe the universe couldn't have been different and you just don't know it 
Um, oh, sure. Or the fact that I imagine God could be different. Well, maybe he can't be different. Maybe there's some inherent property that he must be necessarily the same, and that can't be different. So it, you can't determine that it could have been otherwise in anything other than your imagination. Oh, well, sure. I mean, I'm not talking necessarily about the universe as it exists, but that within the universe, there is change, you know, that there's all these existence that is made up of like, you know, uh, of a whole series of existence that are subject to change. Sure. That's, yeah, there's a common experience. Yes. So, yeah. So, I mean, so what is that? It, how does that relate to the topic of the, cause that has nothing to do with the necessary thing. Well, it does. It, are you like, are you familiar with the distinction between essentially order series and accidentally order series? Uh, vaguely, but it doesn't make a difference to the ontology. So it, it doesn't like change the fact that either one could be the case for the universe. So for example, there could be a necessary thing, a necessary energy state that then created contingent energy states and they can all change. That's perfectly fine. And the necessary energy state doesn't change one bit. So there could be a necessary non-changing fundamental thing in the universe, or could there, be, there could be a necessary changing, eternally changing thing in the universe. Either of those is possible. There's no preferred one there okay maybe just maybe just let me you know walk with me a little bit in this uh in this distinction between these essentially ordered series and these accidentally ordered series because i think that's kind of where this argument's kind of proceeding into and this is kind of what i mentioned before for the avicenna thing so like <clears throat> so an essentially ordered series is a series that is you know kind of necessarily finite so a uh so like a hand that's you know that's that's holding a stick that's moving uh, a rock. So if any of the uh, if at any stage that that first you know necessary cause in that series is removed, then that chain of causality will immediately end. You know, like uh, imagining that it's not like you know like down down a hill or something like that. But <clears throat> the um, the what's what's categorical of that series is that the causality in that series is both bestowed and sustained. So it's, whereas an accidentally ordered series, there's, it could actually be potentially infinite, you know, because you get, because you can remove the first, uh, the, the first causality, the thing that, you know, um, makes the next things in the series be caused and therefore, you could go back, you know, infinitely, you know, like if, and the, an example of that is, uh, you know, a grandfather who begets a father, who begets a son. If the grandfather, you know, ceases to exist, that doesn't necessarily, it doesn't necessarily remove the uh, existence of the son. The son still continues to exist despite the non-existence of the grandfather. So yeah, you, you admit that there's, you know, those, those two categories of, of series exist. Uh, uh sure. And there's also categories yeah. that could be infinite and necessary. Those are perfectly fine. Oh, that's, well, that's actually exactly what Avicenna, you know, kind of argues against is that if, that if it's because necessity in its, uh, in its, in its own category can't, uh, <clears throat> In order for something to be necessary, it has to either be necessary in itself or necessary through uh, through another. If you if you admit that something's part of an essentially ordered series, sure. But the series itself can be necessary in itself. The series itself. Yeah. Well, that, what we're talking about when we're talking about causes, we're talking about actually beings who are agents of cause. We're not necessarily talking about you know, like a, uh, a necessary sort of principle of, uh, of necessity. Uh, sure. But either way, you can just say that there is like essentially a necessarily bubble of energy in the universe that is infinitely changing and necessary and never can stop changing. And it's all a necessary thing, just one necessary thing, which is just a giant bubble of changing quantum vacuum states. Hmm. But that, w <clears throat> but that would be, it would be, but then that would entail that nothing, that everything within that series, 
within that uh, that system is itself necessary. Sure, that's fine. Okay, but but then what if it what if it ceases to what if something in that in that series then ceases to exist? Would the whole series then cease to exist? Uh, either one is possible. So you can have like a necessary particle that has a, a life of seven years or whatever and so after seven years it completely ceases to exist but everything else could still exist and that would be fine or you can yeah that's 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 by but that's by definition an accidentally ordered series then no it could still be a necessarily ordered series like there's no contradiction there no no but but the what's characteristic of an essentially ordered series is that it is is that it is necessarily finite that that because once because the because the causation is both being uh is both being bestowed and sustained you know so it's so it's so it's like it's like the like hands are sort of like you know moving continually an object you know and so and once those hands are moved even if there's like a, you know a whole long series of the chain then then it ceases then the whole chain ceases to to move uh so there could be a link of the chain that goes off and ceases to exist and the rest of the chain is fine yeah but there has to be a but in an essentially ordered series, there has to be a beginning. You know, there is like, you know, I'm nope, not necessarily no, doesn't. arguing. It. No, no, there doesn't. Hmm? There doesn't have to be a beginning you... for that at all. Oh, for an essentially ordered series, just in in the in the definition, like I just, uh, you know, you can agree or disagree with my definition. Well, of I'm not talking about series. the series themselves. I don't really care about how you define different philosophical concepts of series. As all I right. care about is what's the possible origin of the universe. It's possible there is a necessary changing thing that's been eternal. There's a possible that's a necessary changing thing that's outside of space time. There's a possible there's a necessary singular thing. There's a necessary multiple things. All of those are possibilities. You haven't eliminated any of the different possibilities there. So how you define series, it doesn't make a difference. You can define them however you want. I don't care at all. All I care about is sure. what is the necessary thing that grounds the universe and you haven't eliminated any of the possibilities well the the problem with with having a whole bunch of things that are uh that are necessary sort of in in these series you know more that aren't necessarily that aren't necessitated by their by their own being or by another being is that if they uh, is that they would have to, in order for something to be, <clears throat> well, if if something is like if something exists possibly, in order for it to actually come into existence, you know, if there's if there's something that, you know, like say if there's you know a star can be you know possibly born in uh, you know next to Alpha Centauri. Uh, in order for that to actually come into existence, it actually has to uh, exist necessarily either through itself or through something else, right? So there, there, there has to be some sort of like you know, pr there, there has to be some sort of causation for it to exist, or it just has to arrive uh, of its own nature necessarily into existence, right? Uh, if you're saying like there are multiple necessary things, one of the necessary things is a star and the star begins to exist. That... Well, no, like that, the, the principle is that everything that exists, exists necessarily either through, uh, either through itself or through something else. So it's necessitated. No, no. So there can be a thing that exists necessarily, and then there can be or what's it, contingent things that are a result of that necessary thing. But if that necessary thing is determined, then all of those contingent things are also necessary, but they themselves don't necessarily exist. They're just a necessary cause of what necessarily exists. Yeah, yeah. But in order for them to actually be a cause, they first have to be in effect. Sure. Yeah. Uh, sure. So, so they're they're an effect of the necessary thing, but those effects themselves are not the necessary thing, but they're necessary yeah. effects. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. You got that. So, in order, but in order for that chain to work, there has to be something uh, necessary that is necessary in itself and not necessary through another. Sure. Okay. Reality. And so that's the thing. That's reality, and that's what I would also say is God. That's uh, all you. Okay, that's the it. that's the same statement you said before. So reality exists, yeah. and you label that with the word God, which means the same thing as reality, and has no greater meaning whatsoever. Okay, okay. it's still naturalistic yeah. pantheism. You're just you're just relabeling naturalistic pantheism, God. Well, no, because the, because the things that 
exist because there's things that are contingent upon that existence you know because the th because there's the effects that are either that are caused by that are caused by the previous the the, the previous necessary cause which is all you know, compatible with naturalistic pantheism so you're just taking naturalistic pantheism and relabeling it god i'm going to steal that well, that is my new actually, argument i'm stealing the theistic argument you're relabeling naturalistic pantheism well actually yeah th there is a possibility for uh, pantheism in sort of uh, the uh, Aquinas's uh, model. Like he even actually, he even actually admits, like through rationality, you can just you can just have a uh, you can you can have the eternity of the world uh, equally as much as you have the uh, you know the finite existence of the world. That's what that's actually kind of Aquinas's argument. But Avicenna has a little bit more elaborate argument, which I've been kind of uh, going into a little bit here. So, so I am missing because my whole argument is is that uh, everything could be explained equally or better by a non-conscious, natural, necessary thing, and then, oh sure, then yeah, the conscious the necessary thing. Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, we can't like we can't really argue for rationally for God's consciousness. I mean, I, I think that's something that uh, that would be in the realm of faith more so than the realm of, of reason. Okay, but isn't that just kind yeah. of admitting that the whole atheist position is is correct? Well, no, because not if the atheist position is asserting that uh, that God uh, positively does not exist. I mean, well, no, so, I so most atheists, atheists, most, believe, most yeah. atheists claim that there's no reason to believe in a God and that everything in the reality can be explained by natural things like naturalistic pantheism without any reference to a non-physical consciousness. That is essentially the, the basis of the vast majority of atheists positions that everything can be explained by nature. You don't need a conscious entity there to do it. So everything you said seems to be compatible with that version of atheism. Mm. Uh, I guess if you just, yeah, if you just going from like a, a, positively sort of like you know reason <laughs> positively from reason but i guess the i guess the you know the distinction is that if you consider if you pantheism considers everything to be god you know this correct? is yeah. some of the version so no it doesn't okay that. oh it doesn't okay it doesn't even have the word god in it in like naturalistic pantheism is if you just go to the stanford encyclopedia of philosophy for pantheism the section on naturalistic pantheism just means it doesn't have any additional entailments other than what is ontologically granted by science essentially so it's just, weird though but why would it have the word why would it have the word theism in it at all then uh, why does the word atheism have theism? Why does the word dilatheism have the word theism? Is it di dilatheism mm. is just a a logic that has contradictions in it? So I mean, mm. it has nothing to do with a god. The fact that it has the word theism is is irrelevant to the etymology. It's not not important. Right. It's, it's, yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it's, like, a, it's essentially the reason it has the word theism isn't is to represent it's an alternative basis of the necessary grounds of reality that has sure. nothing to do with a god, and it's just a natural thing. So it's natural. And theism, because it's a replacement for this God hypothesis, in that it fills the necessary thing gap with a non-conscious entity. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. But I guess the I guess the only difference then between you know the theism and the naturalistic pantheism is that there's is that there is a, a different there's a different sort of a relation between be between God the being God who is being and everything else that participates in being. You know, because you can say well, well that relationship to, would be yeah. the same. So, so that relationship is that there is this necess necessary essence of the naturalistic pantheism, which is being, is, is how you define it. And then there are the contingent things, which are a result or a, an effect of that being, or partake in being, or whatever way you want to phrase it. That would be the same as one of the oh, possibilities. Yes, basically the same thing that that Aristotle believes. Then, like that, there's but there, but he just calls it kind of like you know the prime mover, and that there's uh, all these sort of uh, and then and then the the whole world sort of like exists you know, contingently in relation to that necessary thing. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. So the only oh, interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. difference there would be is that naturalistic pantheism gets rid of all of the consciousness part. So no... Uh, oh, yeah. Well, Aristotle didn't even believe in the consciousness of the prime mover necessarily. Yeah. So so essentially that's the foundation of my argument is that everything, all of the theistic arguments and evidence can be explained by this non-conscious uh, foundation of necessary reality, which is essentially mm -hmm. just what science is leaning towards indicating uh, but yeah, I don't think you could. Yeah, I don't think you could con necessarily, through reason, argue for God's consciousness because even Aquinas admits that God's essence is unknown. So you can't prove it through reason. It's just pure. It's it's mystery. So it, anything 
particular about God, you know, you can deduce, you know, he, he, he tries to go further that you can do deduce, you know, like, you know, principles from God, like, uh, goodness and oneness, but those do have like, you know, a lot of metaphysical assumptions to them. So if you have like more of a symbolic understanding of, of language, you know, like Wittgenstein or something, then it wouldn't actually be, be sensible because you're just talking about, you know, uh, you know, like being as if it's, you know, as if it's, you know, something, you know, and so it kind of, it, it, divert, it diverts past kind of like, you know, the state of affairs. Okay, well, I'm fine so, with yeah. that. Yeah, so I mean, I just have a kind of a, a richer understanding of what language can actually do, but that's also connected to my faith. So because I believe that reason can actually, you know, talk about, you know, realities that are beyond, you know, the uh, the state of affairs, but that is in itself a faith-based claim. Okay, so I mean, yeah, yeah like if, if you admit that <laughs> there isn't anything yeah. about naturalistic pantheism that can't explain everything about reality that the theists, the, the ones who argue for a consciousness can, then I mean, yeah. Yeah, from, yeah, from a just yeah, purely rational standpoint. I mean, I guess the only thing then that we could argue about is um, what we talked about more in the uh, in the uh, previous argument about you know like miracles and and you know signs for uh, for God's existence in the uh, in the visible world. Sure. Yeah, that would be novel testable predictions. Like miracles would definitely be evidence. I count. Yeah. I'd be happy to grant those. I just don't think they have happened. <laughs> Yeah, there's like, it'd be hard to actually sort of like, you know, conceptually come up with a, uh, well, it's, it's hard to actually, you know, present something that would actually qualify as, as, uh, uh, as sorry, what, how did you uh, define it? evidence Novel again? Novel predictions? Novel testable prediction. Yeah, so I, I did think of one, actually. Well, that, uh, I not, pray for a gold a brick and, and a gold brick appears in front of me. I was, well, I yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, that's kind of assuming God's sort of like, you know, like a machine or something like that. You well, know? it doesn't, but like it the nature like, of God yeah. here doesn't matter. It's just about the, the nature of novel testable prediction. So you assume right. a nature of God, whatever you want it to be, and then you uh, say, if God has this nature, we expect this consequence. We do a test to see if that consequence happens. We say, ah, we found the consequence. Therefore, we have a good reason to believe God has this nature. So if I say, if God has the nature of giving me gold bricks, if when I pray for it and I pray for a gold brick and one appears, that's a good reason to believe that God is there and he has this nature. So that would be sure. a novel testable prediction, which would be evidence of God if he had this nature. You can replace his nature with whatever you want. That's just how science works. You just pick any hypothesis you say if this thing exists and does this we're going to see this and so yeah i mean but that's that's kind of assuming that god is that god is sort of like you know a, a, an actual sort of uh observable reality that you know that interacts in a predictable way with the world no that's just what we would need to do to show it isn't imaginary so for anything that mm. isn't imaginary uh to show that it actually exists independent of our imagination you would need some way to differentiate whether it was one of the imaginary things or the real things. And the only way that we have to do that effectively is that uh, because our imaginations cannot represent reality very accurately, we can't like predict the next lottery numbers very well. Uh, if you could come up with a model that can produce the lottery numbers very accurately every single month, it, that's very good evidence that that model is more than just our imagination. Because our imagination is bad at representing reality. This model is very good at representing reality. So if you have something like that, where you have this model that can predict something about reality, uh, then that's good evidence it's not imaginary. Uh, it, so it I, doesn't, doesn't, it's not necessarily about God's nature here. It's just about how do we show it's not in our imagination. I've got a, I've got a conceptual sort of uh, a hypothetical uh, example of you know how something like that could work. So in the Catholic tradition, there's this uh, blood miracle uh, by Januarius. Now this isn't something I totally base my faith on, but there's this idea that three days of the year, the blood that uh, the this blood like you know kind of uh, liquefies as just kind of you know, and he was like a martyr from the fourth century or something like that. So if conceivably that was able to happen like in a in a reliable sort of you know testable way, and it only happened on on those days and not any other time and that you could like you know carbon date it back to like you know time near that near that time when it actually came from and actually put it like you know like in a lab and you know have it observed for you know say a couple years that would probably you know yep would that would that qualify as novel test with the prediction yep. yeah well that's and that case doesn't you know doesn't hold because you know there's uh they don't want they don't want to test it because this is like an old specimen and then you know they're, they're worried they're coming you know i'm not i'm not necessarily totally convinced by the miracle 
either. I mean, as Catholics, well, those we have all have been tested and they've all been proven false. So uh, all of the blood oh. miracles have been tested as far as I'm aware, and they realize they're not. It's actually just rust mixed with water in some cases, and that there's been some biological material mixed in to make it seem real. All of those have been tested and been proven false, 100%. Oh well, this one hasn't hasn't been tested just because it's you know they 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 haven't allowed scientists to actually you know open it up and actually you know test a sample from it. So it's just something that's kind of ongoing, and it could be like you know conceivably just something that's kind of like being held onto as a way of you know deceiving people, but or or it could just be something you know more naive you know that it's like you know it's like oh we just don't want to you know ruin this you know precious you know relic of the church or something like that. Yeah, that that could definitely but, not yeah. be it because if they actually had a mm. verifiable miracle of god they would they would not hide it this would be front page news everywhere we have proven god uh, we have oh, good know, of god I, so but you, but you know but do you know conceivably why like a christian would would say like why there's not these like miracles that are like that are proof of god no they would all they would all want to say that that's like that's well, like no, the apologist no, wet just, dream no no the reason why is because then you wouldn't actually be able to have you know saving faith because faith actually, in or, in order to be you know saved, we actually have to have you know faith that goes beyond any desire of you know provability. No, that that's, could, could that's you imagine that William Lane Craig, that. like he has actual evidence of a god, and he's like, I'm just not going to present this because I want you to have delusional faith. So I'm going to present oh, the yeah, worst no, arguments I mean, imaginable just because I, you know, I could convince you with this real evidence, but I'm, I'm not going to present that. No, Why no, 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 that? yeah. No, but he doesn't. But but it's it's in kind of in in God's. You know, this is obviously you know, like all talking about you know the realm of faith. But that there, it wouldn't actually be faith if God was you know was tangibly proven. You know, it, there actually has to be a, an element of belief that actually you know comes from the individual beyond you know just sheer evidence in order for a person to be be saved. At least in our tradition, that's you know what uh what we believe that you actually have to sort of like you know make that leap of faith in order for it to be saving because it's not faith if it's just if it's just completely you know solid evidence sure so but what i hear you saying yeah. is that no i cannot provide a way to differentiate imagination from reality because if we did that then we'd have reason to believe it's real well i mean you would have to like yeah i mean you have to believe yeah i mean like there is you know there is evidence there's just not conclusive evidence you know, like, I mean, so what's the evidence? Yeah. Where's the, where's the evidence that is non conclusive? Well, miracles happen all the time. Like even like, even my, but they're not, they're just not conclusive. Like my dad, like last week he received some prayer and he, and then he, uh, lost this like pain that he had from like 18 years. Like he had this like, you know, chronic, you know, really debilitating pain. And then, you know, a couple of people prayed over him and, uh, he's pain free. I mean, it could be, you know, there's definitely natural, uh, causes that why do you consider that. that evidence so so you said that's evidence it's just not conclusive no i don't see that as evidence at all I oh, see right. there is a phenomenon yeah, in, we in haven't explained sure. so there, yeah. the fact there's a phenomenon we haven't explained isn't evidence of hypothesis x because i mean that's an argument from ignorance like we can't explain that therefore god like that that's not evidence that's an argument from ignorance oh sure i mean yeah i don't think i don't think we can come up with I guess according to your, you know, definition of evidence, yeah, I don't think that we can actually uh, achieve anything like that because God is unknowable. God just like is, you know, so it's just, so it's, uh, it's like trying to, you know, prove or explain existence in itself. It's a mystery. Well, I mean, I can definitely imagine things like a gold brick that would work, but so it, it seems like the standard we have for just someone discovered a new species of animal is too high of a standard for God. So, I mean, would you no, accept just, that someone discovered a unicorn just based off of their their testimony? Well, no, but that's just an observable reality, whereas God isn't an observable reality. God just is. He doesn't have any, you know, composition. That's like, this is going back to like, you know, this whole, the whole thing about, you know, divine simplicity, right? Like, you know, like you are, how could, why is it different from like, you know, why can't you just replace God with like a, with a molecule? I remember you talked about that with, uh, Spiegel, you know, like, why can't you just replace him with like, you know, this, and then, and, and the reason for that, you know, is because that molecule is like, you know, composition, it kind of, you know, begs the question how it was composed, but God doesn't have composition. He just Part of it doesn't have composition either. So that, that would be a misrepresentation. So this is actually an argument brought up by uh, Graham Opie, one of the leading atheist philosophers uh, in the world right now, uh, that yeah, you can just replace God with a necessary particle that is, has equally as representative properties, just not the consciousness. 
it's just equally as powerful, equally as singular, equally as being, equally as pure essence. None of the consciousness stuff, and you, you get the same result. Okay, but, but would it be? So, but would would it still be you know being in a sense like yep, you know, that's, there's no that's consciousness, the, still still being, still perfect uh, essence, still perfect actuality, no consciousness. Right. Yeah. So that would be like you know kind of Aristotle's God then. Yeah, like the naturalistic pantheism view that that I right, take. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. But so I wanted that's... to go back to um, saying that. So evidence we would would not be sufficient to show the existence of a unicorn, which is just like a, a horse with a horn on its head. Somehow that the evidence that would not be sufficient to even indicate something that simple is somehow good enough for the fundamental nature of all of reality. Like I, I think there is a a fundamental misunderstanding of the burden of proof here like extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence and saying that a unicorn exists is significantly less extraordinary than saying there is an ultimate nature of the reality which is god uh and jesus and and etc cetera, etc cetera. those would be significantly well, I, more extraordinary so if evidence isn't good enough to show unicorns exist then it's definitely not good enough to show that god exists well sure i mean but uh like what are you like i don't know like what yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I just don't think that um, observable evidence uh, is necessarily the the best way of of proving an unseen god. Like, it, it'd be, well, that's, that's to, perfectly like, fine. Yeah. So, so I'm my position is is that you can present yeah. any way you want to differentiate imagination from reality. Now, I use testable predictions. So, so testable predictions is the way that I know that works to do this. If you have another way that works, let me know. I'm happy to try and figure this out if it does or not. Let's go. Well, what are the other ways that, that can effectively differentiate imagination from reality other than predictions? Well, existence. <laughs> we'll come back the to the same definition of God. <laughs> like, like what? Yeah, I mean... Oh, Mannerite, Mannerite asks, what is your favorite cheese? Super chat from Mannerite. What is your favorite cheese? He oh, asked that every time. Cheese. Oh, interesting, yeah. Uh, I kind of like... I don't know. I kind of like brie as a uh, as kind of a standard go-to cheese. You know, there's a lot of other fancier cheeses that I like, but I like just kind of Brie is a standard cheese. I like American cheese. I like to put that's nice. my favorite kind on cheeseburgers and omelets. It's really? Oh, interesting. The yeah. cheapest, most processed kind is the best. <laughs> like Velveeta, like the uh, the old school American cheese. Well, that's cheddar. Wow. Velveeta just cheddar. cheddar but, oh, uh, oh, it is. Okay. Yeah, I do like craft, like in the little plastic packages that like open up and you, and you put them on. It's oh, wow. More processed than Velveeta. But anyway, yeah. uh, so how does this like. You said that there is existence. Like I don't know if you were joking or not. But you said existence is a way to, to differentiate imagination from reality. Um, sure. I mean, like th that comes back to the to that principle of Wittgenstein that that not how the world is, but that it is is you know the mystery. And so God is is in principle you know mysterious and and unknowable through through reason alone. I mean, he can reveal himself, you know, and I believe that he has. But that's but that faith wait a minute i think you just contradicted yourself so so oh interesting yeah because because my question was is how do you differentiate imagination from reality and you said you can't with rationality oh no 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 that's not what i'm saying okay. i'm just talking about i'm I, I was just talking about uh about god you know and 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 yeah yeah but i guess oh yeah interesting yeah so i guess what how you differentiate that to answer your question more is that that it is that that it's just not that it's not just like a, a product of thought, right? The difference between, you know, whether or not I, I think uh, of someone, like the fact that someone, how someone is, you know, I can think of all these reasons and explanations for how someone is, but that doesn't explain. It still begs the question that, you know, that they exist, you know, or, you know, why they exist. Okay, not so not existence. following. Uh, it's, yeah, one it's, second, another it's, super chat. J J Theist Jones says, uh, "Jason, yeah. you must ref only refer to Teach of his daddy from now here on out." Hilarious. hilarious. Okay. But so so, my question was: is in order to show anything exists independent of our imagination, we need some way to differentiate for any hypothesis whether it is imaginary or is real. And so, for God, you're saying God is not imaginary. And and so, I'm asking you, well, how do you show that? And you just said, well, he he. You just said, well, well, if, something uh, if, God, of if God is, if just God is, just in a, in, a, in a mere, if God just is merely sort of you know existence. You know, if just the way that like you know that that naturalistic pantheism uh, argument 
uh, is just basically the same as saying, you know, that, that particle is God, you know? And so there's, I, so what's, what's a system that, uh, that you believe is kind of more evidentiary than there, than existence as being something necessary that exists outside of the, the actual world, that the actual world, uh, participates in this, um, mysterious reality that is existence. Uh, well, I think novel testable predictions is the only way. I don't think anything else works as far as I'm aware, other than uh, just things about our imagination. So like logic and math, just thinking about stuff can show imaginary things, but it can't show things that are not imaginary. Um, well, then you're just reducing all thought to just observation. Uh, no, I'm saying thought is thought. Thought is, thought is imagination. And then to show something is not imagination, well, then we have to do some method to show that it's not imagination. So, so everything starts as imaginary because everything is starts as an idea in our heads. And then we need some additional feature other than just it's an imagination in our heads to show it's more than that. And the way we do that is because our imagination is very bad at predicting the future. If we have a method that is very good at predicting the future, then that is a good reason to believe that that method is more than just our imagination. But I'm not seeing how you've presented by saying existence, I don't see how that can show the difference between my imagining of a unicorn or a leprechaun or a fairy or a god or anything. I don't see how that works. Well, that's, you know, that's taking a lot more for granted about God than, than my definition grants. So, you know, like my definition is the one that you just said doesn't, doesn't really prove anything. It's just because we're saying that God is reality the, exists and God yeah. is reality. Yeah. Uh, okay. But so, so I'm, I'm fine with that part. Like obviously reality exists. We can make novel testable predictions about reality existing so that we can yeah. confirm just fine. The, yeah. the question is the next part, because you mentioned there are these other things, the other evidences of miracles and these miracles are not conclusive, oh, but okay, they are the miracles, evidence, yeah. right? No, I mean, yeah, I guess they're not evidence in the way that you would sort of produce, talk about evidence. They're just, but they just point to, the, and not even necessarily, because the, the the reality with miracles is that they're not there actually to, you know, prove God's existence. They're there just to help confirm the, the faith of things that people already have but you can't arrive at faith through reason so, so what do you actually... mean by confirm here because when i when i hear the word confirm or is evidence i'm thinking this is a way to indicate not with 100 percent certainty that it is a non-imaginary thing like this helps us give us gives us reason to believe it is a non-imaginary thing is what mm -hmm. what i think conclude or evidence or reason or indicates means is that we have a reason to believe that this thing is not one of the imaginary things. It may not be enough to conclude it with certainty or a sufficient amount, but it moves the dial in that direction. That's what I I, I hear you saying when you say that. Oh right, yeah. That the miracles are doing. Yeah, so it, so yeah, I guess it, I guess it sort of um, it gives like further confirmation to something that I've already received uh, outside of myself because faith isn't something that you know that isn't just purely like a, a human act you know something again this is and even the definition of faith itself kind of you know comes from faith but it's something that's you know received from god you know that you have this this belief that has been you know bestowed in you and uh and that there's you know certain principles within that uh in that faith that are in themselves unprovable you know through reason like for, uh, for specifically and doctrinally those are like the trinity and the incarnation those are two realities that you couldn't uh you couldn't actually reach through reason but through like sort of like you know the the lens of sort of of faith and of god of god of god actual uh and sort of taking an assumption of god's existence then you can then you can come to start proving all of these other uh assertions uh, of God as well. But if you have just like, if you just have like a materialistic outlook, then it wouldn't be, it wouldn't really be possible to do that because. Well, I, I wouldn't faith, say, yeah. I wouldn't say that. So I would say that if, suppose the Hindu God is real. And if you pray to the Hindu God, he gives you a gold brick every time you pray to the Hindu God. I think that using reason, we can, can, we can understand the ultimate nature of reality that way. We can say, yeah, the Hindu God is the real one because we have reason to believe it's not imaginary through this test. 
Well, yeah, um, but then no one would, but then no one would have faith in the Hindu God. You just, everyone just so, accept so, that he You, you claim you can't know this through reason, or you can't indicate this with reason. And I'm saying, well, yeah, you can't. Like the ultimate nature of reality oh, can sure, be indicated sure, by sure, reason. Yeah. And I don't need to yeah. suppose anything about naturalism to do this. It has nothing to do with yep. any any claim of naturalism. So, sure. Uh, it seems like you're admitting that the miracles do not move the dial more towards it being non-imaginary. It's only that the miracles are um, reiterating your own prior faith claim and that because you yeah. have faith, you believe this will happen, this happens, therefore it reiterates your faith, something like that? Yeah, it is kind of circular, but like faith itself is, uh, you know, is a kind of a, a supernatural claim. If I say I have faith... It's that I've actually you know, received something from God. So that and that in itself is a faith-based claim. So it's not it's not just like it's not just like uh, worldly you know faith like belief in the sun is something that's kind of you know that's part of it. Like you know from our part we have to like actively you know continue to believe. But there's also it's also kind of synergistic that there's this uh, divine element to it as well. Oh, that it's bestowed. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. another super chat, J J Theus Jones says, uh, so what is the alternative to observable evidence and what makes that alternative viable? Like, it seems to me like you're saying there isn't one. It's just, uh, someone else asked, like, it, it seems like you're just using confirmation bias as, as your, as your guide here. It seems like you have a belief and your belief would expect this and it happens. Therefore it confirms your belief kind of a thing. Oh sure, yeah. I, I guess yeah. It totally would be a, a bias. Like I mean, um, it, there is like you know because you have like when you have like something that that happens like you know a uh, like there was in 2006 there was just some. Meta I'm just gonna like you know I could just lift a, a litany of of miracles, but I just like you know list one. There uh, in 2006 there was this guy who was working on this big truck, and then the truck came down on and the axle sort of like landed on his stomach. And uh, then the doctors, you know, went to and it's like the small intestine was destroyed. And then the doctors found that, you know, part of after like opening him up, that part of like his small intestine had, you know, regenerated. I don't know if you've uh, heard about this particular miracle, but uh, yeah, but it's one that enough that my, you know, convinced my doctor that that healing actually uh, is is a reality. But I don't know. Are you uh, are you familiar with that that one in particular? Uh, I'm familiar with a lot of. Uh, spontaneous healings, but that's a pretty natural yeah. phenomenon that happens in lots of cases, mostly mm. discovered to all be biology. Like the more impressive ones are like having uh, really bad cancer or really bad colon polyps that just disappear overnight, essentially. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. those have all been discovered to be like, oh, we have, there's actually a protein that causes those. And if you get, get the protein at the, what's it? Yeah. Forget, that, forget the composition of stuff in your stomach. If you change it in certain ways, it can have these really profound effects. There's lots of stuff like that in biology that, that we see. So I don't, I wouldn't consider yeah, yeah. there is hair as a phenomenon we can't explain. I wouldn't consider sure. that a confirmation of faith. Like I'd say, yeah. I have faith, therefore things will happen that I can't explain. Things happen I can't explain, therefore my faith. Well, like, Well, I mean, it's like, it's, it's that they happen, you know, some somehow in like in proximity with uh, with prayer and belief. But I guess you know maybe they do happen with atheists as well. I mean, but all of that would just be you know the action of God because you know science is you know science is kind of the invisible is kind of how God invisibly acts throughout the world. You know that's kind of how George Lemaitre, in order to find it, who's the uh, you know who invented the you know the big uh, who pr pr proposed the the Big Bang theory, right? So it's so science in the in the Catholic view at least isn't at all compatible with um, with belief. You know, you could actually take every miracle and have like you know a, a scientific explanation for that, and that wouldn't you know threaten the paradigm of God at all. Sure, I mean you could say that everything we see was created by leprechauns five seconds ago, and <laughs> that would also be not incompatible. So, well, sure, I mean. Well, it's, yeah, the, it's I mean, the problem with determination. Like, you can take all of the past data and make it fit any hypothesis you want, like sure. leprechauns five seconds ago or brain in a vat, matrix, magic pixies, whatever, which is why we consider that not to be evidence because all of the imaginary ones can do that. The real one can do that plus something else, which is the, the novel testable predictions thing. So the fact that you would expect, because you have faith, you expect miracles to take place in the presence of christian prayer like if christian prayer happens all the time all over the world 
and this was just a random phenomenon like rain rain happens in the presence of christian <laughs> prayer does that mean that rain oh, is a sure. sign from god probably not because it also happens w sure. when there were no yeah. humans yeah well and it's even in the bible that like that uh that the sun shines on the that the sun shines on the just and the unjust alike you know so it's yeah so even like you know even these miraculous occurrences you know very well could happen you know with uh with an unbeliever you know so it's yeah i mean it's at the end you know there at the end of it all there is kind of like you know a pretty stark division between um faith and reason in this you know in some of these beliefs like you know if you have like you know a phenomenon of of like you know natural pantheism where you believe in like sort of this you know thing that necessarily exists that everything you know participates in it then yeah that's basically as far as reason can get you i mean but that thing isn't going to be explicable by by reason it just it, it just is you know and so that's kind of as about as far as reason can can actually take us well i mean reason can definitely indicate the ultimate nature of reality like the gold brick thing so oh um, right 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 yeah, so yeah, I, don't... Yeah. I mean but but that's but 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 then i but then i guess the the reason why god doesn't want that is he desires us to to freely accept him through faith and so if it if it was you know if there was something that was inconstitutable evidence of god then people would have to accept it you know uh through uh, accept it through reason then it would destroy the possibility of, of faith and god doesn't desire that well i mean that's definitely not the case because i mean people reject the flat earth and there's we've proven oh, sure, the yeah. world is circular but the problem here is that like um if we had some kind of model of reality said so the ultimate nature of reality is string theory or whatever and string theory predicts yeah. absolutely everything that's going to happen every second from now till infinity and gets it right on every single occasion we could just say up oh, here are all of the lottery numbers for the next 10,000 years and it's right 100% of the time we can fairly conclusively say string theory is right it, it is the ultimate nature and there isn't another one everything else was wrong especially if like string theory says yeah there's no god there's no anything else this is everything that's going to happen ever in the history of everything and it gets everything right for the next like 10 years and continues to get things right we can pretty conclusively include yeah there's no god it's string theory string theory is the correct fundamental nature of reality well i, I don't think string theory necessarily would preclude you know that def my definition of god right you know, the, that, the, the yeah. naturalistic pantheistic one right it wouldn't so i, I would say that well yeah but i i, I don't i don't cons i don't call it naturalist pantheism you know because there is you know because it's distinguished that got there's a distinction between the necessary being and all of the other beings right right so know, so to, is, to yeah. be more specific i'm saying like if string theory said there was no yahweh no jesus they did not exist uh, or something like that then we can conclude mm. that yeah this this one is the real representation of the ultimate nature of reality and that one is the incorrect representation of ultimate reality oh so, yeah if you yeah if you you if you could pr uh produce you know conclusive evidence that that jesus didn't exist and yeah then that would pretty much destroy christianity sort of so, so what i'm saying is yeah. that if we have a model of string theory that makes testable predictions about everything in the future gets all of the lottery numbers right tells us everything about what's going to happen in the universe mm -hmm. when black holes are going to come it's every every fact about the future is correct and then it also tells us facts about the past like jesus didn't exist or something then mm -hmm. we could conclude that the string theory is the ultimate nature of reality just based off of the predictions it's made in the future that are all right with a really high level of accuracy and then infer it's also right about the past so there was no jesus christianity is wrong uh mm -hmm. all of the other gods don't exist that it says don't exist so it, it could, we would be reasonable to conclude that through reason and logic that this is the ultimate nature of reality. And so reason can give us access to that and it can be uh, exclusionary towards other God hypotheses. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I, I guess so. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, again, like, yeah, if, if, yeah, there, that would be, there would be definitely a way of uh, falsifying, you know, belief in, in Christianity. But, you know, but that's, you know, I, I, because there is, these uh these faith based and sort of historical claims you know that you know that kind of coincide and so yeah so there's not yeah so yeah i'm i'm open to that you know that line of argument but it's but that's still kind of remains to be the case you know that sure you know, that, yeah sure yeah obviously we don't we don't have that yet yeah. that's for sure i, I agree sure. yeah uh, yeah but yeah i would say that we can absolutely use reason to indicate the ultimate nature of reality we wouldn't need to uh preclude us from being able to do so based off of some assumption of naturalism or anything well you still but you still can't 
explain that you know that the world is you know you can't explain you know and even Bertrand Russell says as much you know he says that you know that the existence of the world itself is mystery you know that you know that there are that there is something rather than nothing you know this is kind of you know a fundamental question of philosophy well you know, I'm not sure much, yeah. what that has to do with the topic exactly so yes reality yeah. exists and we don't know why reality exists but yeah, I mean, and then, but that would then, apply to literally kind of, anything that ever existed. So even if the Christian God was true, yeah. that would still apply to the Christian God. So I'm not sure. Uh, no, not necessarily. I I, I think that the uh, that the uh, Christian God is compatible with the God of uh, of the philosophers or this natural has No, no, I'm talking just, just about this problem that you've brought up. You said that we can't explain why reality exists. Like, even if God exists, well, we can't explain why God exists as opposed to doesn't exist for the exact same reason. And if there's a solution you propose oh, yeah, to yeah. that. Oh, yeah, yeah. as much, yeah. So, like, if you said, well, we can't explain it because God is necessary, has a necessary nature. We can just take the same answer and say, ah, the universe, reality has a necessary nature and just say, okay, well, we, we can then solve it for reality, too, without a God. So, that same problem applies to anything that exists. Um, the only real possibility is that it's reality has some nature that it must exist inherently that we just well we won't be able to explain that which is fine we don't need to like because it's reality yeah but i mean there's but you, the the thatness of of the world you know it does sort of like it does sort of beg you know it begs the it begs the question you know and, and i think father philip is right is that it, that it kind of does lead that mystery sort of leads to wonder even if we can't speak about it even if we do have to kind of pass over it in silence you know we do in our in our nature want to ask you know why and this and the understanding of god is something that is something that does explain that that why because it's because his essence you know, is to exist. And we, so we could just say yeah. that about reality itself and get rid of the, the God aspect. So no matter which hypothesis you adopt, they can all take that exact same answer. Well, I mean, but I guess I suppose the, the difference is, is that you have, when you have, when you understand reality be to be contingent, you know, upon you know other other phenomena then it, wait, then wait, wait, it, so yeah. so so reality is everything that exists i don't think reality can be contingent oh no no yeah there is you know there is some but like but i guess that uh the difference between god is that god has an ontological relationship with reality whereas we have a contingent relationship with rea reality yeah yeah and so, so so but so obviously there's things in reality that aren't necessary and there are things in reality that would be necessary. But I don't think reality itself can only be contingent things. I don't think reality itself can just be contingent things. That would be weird. Yeah, because if it's made up entirely of contingent things, yeah, then it would be possible for nothing to exist. Sure. So, so, so yeah. when we're talking about reality, reality must be the necessary thing or the most necessary thing must be in reality somewhere. Yeah. If God yeah. exists... He exists in reality. Well, no, because God, because everything that exists, exists inside reality, which is God. That, that would still be in reality. So, so reality is, again, everything that exists. So if God exists, then he would be in reality. Yeah, I mean, it, but it's, uh, but he's not, he's not like a, a guy. He's not just like a being. Well, that's fine. It doesn't matter how he exists yeah. in reality. Reality just means all of the things that exist. So if he's one yeah. or all of the things that exist, he's still in reality. Because in reality doesn't mean like there's literally a box called reality and he's inside of that box somewhere. Right. It just right. means yeah, yeah. one of the existing things. Yeah. Sure. I'm lost now. Though, what were we talking about? Uh, you you brought up. You you were talking about how reality could be contingent in some way. I don't, I don't and I was confused by. Oh, uh, right, right, right. No, yeah, I just meant when when I meant reality, I meant all the things that are in reality that that are at least observable, like existence. Yeah. The the known yeah. things. Well, yeah, not not even just the the known things that uh you know that all the things, in a sense, and this is getting back to like you know the essentially order series, you know, is that they in order for them to be able to be causes they have to be they have to be first cause you know that they are necessarily you know effects you know so there is 
you know, so, but, but then, yeah, you could have this naturalistic pantheist, pantheistic argument, you know, where there, where that, that thing isn't, you know, as, isn't necessarily conscious. And I, I don't think you can actually rationally argue for its consciousness unless you, and like, unless you, uh, you know, you take the, um, you know, the, the, some of those arguments that you get into other, with other, uh, theists about, you know, conscious, that consciousness can arrive from its own self. But I mean, I, I'm not totally convinced by those from just a purely rationalistic perspective. Like you said, that that is the composition fallacy, right? That it's yep. like, yeah. But I mean, I guess like walls cannot come from non walls. But wait a minute, bricks aren't walls, and bricks make walls. So yes, they can. But there still has to be, but there still has to be like a, an agent for that cause to actually to actually happen. Like you know, the the bricks themselves won't become walls unless they're acted upon. Uh, well, no. If we just like if there's a tornado or something, it can knock a bunch of wall bricks together and build a gigantic wall. Not like yeah, but the tornado brick. then, then the tornado would be the would be the the cause in that case. Yeah, so a non wall making a wall. Oh yeah, but I mean, but that but it's but it's caused. So the bricks actually are contingent upon that tornado. Yes. To, so so I think I think all consciousness is caused. I think all consciousness is a is not a necessary thing. I think it's uh, right. Yeah. So, but then it would just be traceable back to sort of all of nature. But again, yeah. that fits again. That fits again with. Uh, with you know my definition of god as well okay because you know you could have because you could have consciousness arise through nature through evolution and all of those all of those contingent sort of like you know realities that were necessary for making up consciousness could have just been how god uh, arranged things to actually happen sure yeah well i guess we're at an impasse then <laughs> well I, I think we like agreed on everything i don't think yeah, there was an impasse there <laughs> Like, yes, I agree. We could, yeah. There's no way to differentiate between imagination from reality in context of a God. That's why I prefer atheism. So just, I guess the only, the only disagreement then is like, are, are, uh, are you an atheist or a theist then? Or, atheist. or am I an atheist or a theist? Yeah. Okay. Well, I think I'm a theist. So, so yeah, yeah it's, so it's, it's yeah. you have faith. I do not have faith. Yeah. And that's the difference. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Well, maybe we should just leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've been going for a little over an hour anyway, so it's a good time okay. to wrap up. So it was great having cool. you on. Fun conversation. I yeah. Mean, I, I definitely appreciate talking with people like you who are honest interlocutors who aren't uh, dumb idiots like Ask Yourself. So I just wanted to say that. Thank you. Thank you again. Uh, ask Yourself is a Discord guy. We, we don't get along. Oh. So, okay. But, uh, no, yeah. no, that, was, uh, that was really fun. Yeah, appreciate it. It was a lot of fun okay. talking with you, and I'll talk to you later. Take care.